This bike is right behind me, sitting in the dark. We have not actually gotten one of these as a complete bike yet. The only way we were able to even get this one was as a frame. Uh, we're, we're talking about the Giant Trance. So I gotta get some things out of the way first. If you do like this content, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification. All three of those things really help the channel. I do appreciate all the support that everyone has been giving me. More than I ever thought that I would get doing a little bicycle channel like this. If you wanna support, that's how you can do it. Like, subscribe, bell. To catch you up to speed, Keith and myself are going to tackle the Triple Crown of Pisgah this year. That's gonna be fun. He had a Niner that was a large. He's taller than I am. Felt like he needed an XL. This frame became available. So we are going to custom build him a Trans Advanced Pro 29. Obvious thing first, this bike is beautiful. I don't care what anyone says, the marbling on it, the paint is very, very good. I think this is probably the best paint that Giant has done. Downside is you can only get it in this frame set. So what is this frame set? This is the Giant, not X, but it is the Giant Trans Advanced Pro 29er frame the only thing that it does come with you get your frame and you get the rear shock everything else is going to be custom for this guy right here i will tell you what i know about this bike because it's brand spanking new i'll p post up a picture so right here in my in this hand i have last year's trance in this hand i have this year's trance giant really didn't push that this is a brand new frame but it is. It's basically what I think they did is they took the Trans X that they redesigned, I think in 2020 maybe, it might be 2021. The years are running together. They took that frame, they tweaked it very minusculely, and uh, they popped out just the standard Trans 29. Keith really wanted this frame because it is, if you get the complete bike, it is a 120 in the rear and a 130 up front, which is ideal for these uh, triple crown races. If you don't know what those are, it's like O-Ram. So O-Ram is gonna be a like five hour race with a hellacious descent in it. Um, you kind of need a little bit beefier bike than just your standard cross country bike if you don't want to die or if you're professional, whatever. I prefer to have a little bit more suspension. <laughs> so let's go through the specs that he decided to put on this thing because that's very important as well to the weight factor. So on this bike, the wheel set is whiskey rims. He actually built these wheels himself. It is whiskey rims laced up to DT Swiss hubs. He really wanted to make the rims kind of uh, 
like an enduro wheel set. They're wide, they're 30s. He's got Tannis, both front and rear. These things are not the lightest. Even though it is a carbon rim, they're not the lightest wheel set. So it's got XX1 pretty much everywhere. It's got the carbon crank on it, and XX1 shifter. It has a KS dropper post. Let's see, it's got the Fox Evol Float X on the rear. Most importantly, the helm. I think I need to just do a video on the helm because everyone, I haven't personally ridden the helm. I apologize. I really need to because everyone that rides one is just like oogling over it. They love this Cane Creek helm. Keith is no exception. He loves this fork. It is just smooth as butter is what he says. You can't even feel whenever it collapses out and it bottoms out. And he says it eats everything up. He says that this thing set at 130 feels like a Fox at 150. Quick rant on the helm. Everyone praises it. The rest of the goody bits are, you know, a carbon handlebar, a carbon stem. Pretty nice setup. The levers and the calipers are an interesting setup. He had the um, ultimates, the level ultimates, but he wanted four piston. He just ordered the four piston brake calipers and they worked. They fit perfectly on here and they operate fine. I mean, who would have thought? Figured he would try it out because we have heard tales that you can just swap them out and it would operate just fine. But as we all know, SRAM is notorious for not um, working correctly. Yeah, I, I, I was skeptical about this. I've done it with Shimano's and I know it works with Shimano's, but I was skeptical that this wouldn't work. Lo and behold, it does. So there you have the actual specs of this bicycle. Let's weigh it and I will give my first impressions some of the thoughts that I like, dislike on the bike. We'll get a little bit into the frame and the frame design as well. Let's weigh it. Mm -hmm. 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. How much travel was that bike? Hmm? How much travel was that bike? Uh, 130, 120. That's it? Yeah. As heavy as it is at 30 pounds with carbon wheels, I was like, ooh, 30 pounds, hmm. But, 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 I believe I can get this bike down to much less. Uh, Keith has another set of wheels that are much, much lighter. If you look at it and take it for what it actually is, it does have a heavier wheel set on it. He built this wheel set to be as beefy as possible with retaining some semblance of not being a 2,500 gram wheel set. He does have power meter pedals on this thing. They're very heavy for what they are. The Cane Creek helm, that's a heavy fork. There's a trade-off. If you go with Cane Creek, most of their forks are a little bit heavier, but they ride super buttery smooth. The seat post isn't a super duper light seat post either. So he's got Tannis in this thing front and rear as well. That adds weight. There's a lot of weight in this thing. I wanna investigate the weight just a little bit further before I start saying it's a heavy bike. That's all I'm saying with it and I'll leave it at that. I'm coming from racing lightweight XC bikes, so whenever I hear a bike's 30 pounds in my brain, I automatically go, dude, you're gonna pedal a 30 pound bike around? I'm trying to get my head out of the mindset of a weight weenie that's gonna just be pedaling. I'm getting there, right? That's why these races are gonna be interesting because I uh, have, uh, only ridden in Wilson's. I've never been to like Brevard and ridden any of that stuff. When the Trans X came out, I thought it was one of the most beautiful frames that Giant has actually done in recent memory. I was thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with that frame. And this is essentially the Trans X frame pared down a little bit. I do believe kind of eyeballing the two bikes. I think they've tweaked maybe the head tube angle a little bit. This frame does come with a flip chip again. I am not sold on the flip chip, but I think it's cool to have. Basically, you've got a high and a low setting, and it lets you choose how slacked out the bike is, uh, whether or not you want it to be better for pedaling or descending. It's a cool feature to have. Another really nifty feature that this bike has is this thing right here, the bottle cage mount. So it's got a little trap door. I've talked to some people that handle carbon a lot, people that are way smarter than me. So they're telling me that it can add maybe a quarter pound to the frame. So if you're a weight weenie, a quarter pound is a lot. But uh, like my understanding of carbon, anytime you start poking holes in it, you have to reinforce the carbon that is around it to make sure that the frame's not gonna break. So every time you reinforce the carbon around it, 
it's gonna make the frame heavier. To have a trap door like this for maybe a quarter pound more on the frame, for what this bike is getting used for, it's pretty cool. So what does the trap door do? Basically, turn a lever, pop open the trap door. It's got a nifty little bag in there to keep stuff from rattling around, but it lets you basically carry your CO2s, tire levers, anything to fix your bike, multi-tool, PB&J, whatever you can fit in there. Just jam it in there. You have a storage compartment that is your gigantic down tube. And I think that's pretty cool. I, I kind of want a bike that's got it just so I could try it out and see how much I would actually use it. But it's cool that it's a feature on the bike anyway. So what do I actually think about this frame? I am in love with it. I would love to ride it. I would love to have a frame just like this. If I had, to, if you were twisting my arm and I had to give this frame a rating since we've been doing the ratings lately on each bicycle that I do, I would have to give this thing a nine out of 10. But it does come with a nice freaking Kashima coated rear shock on it. And the frame just comes with a lot of features, man. You could have one bike to rule them all with this thing. You could have your somewhat downhill bike with that flip chip, but also a bike that could potentially be light enough to do these enduro races. I mean, this is what Keith got this for. This bike is getting raced this year at three of the biggest races on the East Coast. And I am super excited to see how it performs. It does have the Maestro suspension. And in my opinion, Maestro is one of the best suspension platforms out there. I've got a few videos that are older that I probably need to update about suspension design and it just hooks up. It makes a bike feel extremely stable and confidence inspiring. My Orbea always is a single pivot design. That bike is designed for cross country racing in mind. Now that I put bigger suspension on it, it is way better at the, uh, the downhill, but it is still skittish, I think would be a correct term I would use. For, for describing how the rear end of the bike tracks on something that's got some chunder to it. First impression rating, nine out of 10. I gotta start posting that because I haven't actually ridden this thing and you guys know that I hate giving ratings or hate telling you guys this bike is awesome without being able to truly ride it. So again, this is the first impression, but I was super excited to see this thing. I'm in love with it. If you guys are looking for a trance, they have these frames, Giant has these frames. They don't have the bikes yet, but they have this guy right here. Is it expensive? Uh, yeah, uh, it's a full carbon frame with a Kashima coated rear shock, but it's available. We, I've got so many people that come in and they start asking me questions about bikes and they're like, so is this bike a good deal? And I'm like, can you get it? When they tell me yes, I go, it's a good deal. That's, that's about how the market is right now. If you can find it, it's a good deal. That's for another video entirely. But thank you all, it is the end of the day. I'm messy, I'm greasy. Yeah, I'm rambling because at the end of the day my brain stops and I don't write scripts for this stuff. So let's just get out of here. Let's go ride our bikes. I have a really big group ride coming up this weekend that I am super excited about up in Wilson's Creek. I'm going to be doing a video on that and I'm gonna try and tie it into my Orbea Oys. I think everyone would really enjoy that video because I took a cross country bike that was meant for a hundred travel front and rear, turned it into a uh, Enduro machine. So yeah, let's jump on that one. This bike's awesome. I'll see everyone later. Bye-bye.